Welcome to the Win Make Give podcast. Chad Himes here with my friend Bob Stewart. Bob, how are you today? I heard you guys were talking about me, so I came back. I heard you guys were talking about me because I wasn't here for an episode at one point. I'm good, Chad. I'm good. Well, Bob, I hope it's not your ego that got hurt, <laughs> and that's why you came back today. Uh, it might have been, actually. It might have been. Well, then this episode's for you, Bob Stewart, because we are going to talk about the ego and how to keep your ego in check. So my wife would appreciate that you're having this discussion with me today, Chad. Oh, I think my <laughs> wife would appreciate I'm having this discussion with you too and with me uh, as we go into it. She says her job in life is to make sure that my ego stays as small as possible. Yeah. You, do you have that experience? You get off stage or come home from a speaking tour or something like that, Bob, and the first thing you do when you walk in the house is your wife just says, you suck. <laughs> something along those lines, just to bring you back down to reality. Maybe not quite that blunt, but yeah, you know, you, when you have little kids, they'll, that'll keep your ego in check pretty fast. You know, you, you come in and the first thing you do is step on a bunch of Legos and then stumble up the <laughs> stairs. Like you realize you're not that big of a deal <laughs> pretty fast. So yeah, for sure. There's a, the, the home life grounds me in, in many ways. All right, Bob. So I was reading, uh, not too long ago, uh, ego is the enemy by Ryan holiday. Okay. And I don't know if you've read it, but that book, it was fantastic, highly recommended to everybody out there. Ryan writes some amazing stuff. Um, and this was a book that I read. I did the dictionary definition of ego, Bob, and it's a person's sense of self-esteem or self-importance. I think that m most of the time when we think of ego or we think of people that have like an inflated ego or you think about it with that kind of negative connotation, connotation you're probably thinking of people that have a really high sense of self-importance. Yes. Not necessarily self-esteem because I don't think we often look at people that have high self-esteem and think, ah, oh, he's got a really big ego. But when, but when people have a high sense of self-importance, to me, that's where I think that, that most of that kind of, you know, most of how we think about ego in a negative manner anyway, comes out in that. I absolutely agree. You know, we, when we were sitting there and we were putting this episode together after I had read that and you and I were going over putting together this conversation, the first thing you said to me was, I'd really love Ben's take on this. And I said to Ben, I said, Ben, we want, we want you to record this episode with us. And Ben looked at me and said, I think that's a you and Bob episode. And I said, why, Ben? He goes, well, you probably have to have a bit of an ego to be the guy talking about keeping your ego in check. And I said, well, that's exactly why we want you because here's a guy who has built something and has every right to have a slightly inflated ego at times. Yet I don't know anybody better than Ben for keeping that ego in check on a regular basis. Again, I, I think that Ben has a, a, a high level of self-esteem. I don't think he thinks he's like this super important person, even though he is, right? Like a lot of us rely on him. He's built a company that has a lot of people following him and, and inside of it. So look, I, he realizes that importance, but it doesn't come off with, an, with any kind of an error to it, you know? Correct. And we hope that each and every one of you out there gets that same feeling from Ben, if you've had the opportunity to be with him, and, and hopefully from Bob and I, we might have a little bit of fun with this, yet we all do our best to keep the ego in check, and that's what we want to talk with you about today. We want to talk with you about ways to win by keeping your ego in check. So Bob, let's jump into one of the first ways people can keep their ego in check. What do you got for me? I, we, we need to surround ourselves with different, with people of different skill levels from us, and so, um, we, we want to have people in our world that are better than us at the things that, that we're interested in, right? That okay. will help teach us that, that there's like, there's, mo there's more to be known than what we know today. Sure. Absolutely. Right? I, I follow Ben on wealth conversations all the time. He's much better at managing his money, running his money, using his money to grow more money. Right. So yeah, I'm going to make sure I keep someone like him around. And we keep you around because you're the health guy and, and you're always giving us a hard time about the Diet Cokes and we should be drinking more water. And yep. right over time, that stuff does rub off. But why, why we, do we keep you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the good looking one. So oh, there you go. Okay, got it. Looking. Nice save. Dave, Dave agreed. He just <laughs> um, okay, we, so we have to have people who are better than us to remind us to always be growing and learning. That'll help us keep our ego in check. Keep yep. going. Then we want to have people who are less skilled than us okay. in the things that we're interested in because this fosters humility, Chad, mm. right? It's going gonna, it's gonna to force us, at least if we want to lead them, to, to make them better, to, to, to build them into something for our organization that's, that's really going to you know, benefit our organization, we, we, 
we've got to help them come along, right? If we're sure. in a, a place where we know more than them, there's that transfer of knowledge and, and we're, we have to be responsible for providing support to these people. Okay. Right? So we want to keep the people who are better than us around. We also want to keep the people, I'm not going to say who are worse than us, but are less skilled maybe at that time. Yeah. So again, me helping you and Ben when it comes to health conversations so I can celebrate you guys, which is going to keep me a little more humble. That's right. Okay. That's right. So we've got better than us. We've got not as good as us. What about equal to us? Should we keep some of them around too? Yeah. I mean, those are the people that you, that, that you, that push you, that you push, right? Like you guys are kind of in the boat together. You're doing the same things. You're mm. learning the same things at the same time. We, we absolutely have to have those people because they've kind of come the benchmark, right? For, for how, how we're growing or what our growth looks like. Those people that kind of are in a similar position as us. Absolutely. Okay. And look, all of these different types are going to help you keep your ego in check for a different reason. Right. Right. So it's, it's good to kind of, and the, here's the reality. I think if, if you're in an organization that's small and never growing, like it, they are who they are. Right. But like in our world, I, we, we brought in a gentleman recently, his name's Chris Stewart. He was the former CEO of Berkshire Hathaway home services. It's like, he was a big deal. And, um, it's that, you know, I would call him somebody more skilled than me, right? Oh, At yes, least, right. He's a great public speaker. Um, he's just a really, really deep understanding of our industry. And like when I see a guy like that, I'm like, man, I don't know as much as I thought I knew. Mm. You know, like even some of the words this guy uses to describe things that I've been describing with like lots of sentences and paragraphs for, and he just distills it down to like a phrase or I'm like, Oh my God, that's so brilliant. Like right. language is so important. Like you're so smart and I've got a whole lot to learn, you know? Yep. And sometimes when you don't have those people coming into your world, you start to think, you know, it all. Yes. That's a great point. Cause then the know-it-all starts to develop that self importance that you talked about right. thinking they always have the answer. Whereas when you can put those other people in your world, I'll go run a race and watch people crush me. And be like, oh, I guess I'm not as fast as I <laughs> thought or as strong as I thought because look at these people who crush me. If I just hang out with people who are really slow, sure, I'm going to start to think a little too much of myself. Yeah. And okay. The, the direct opposite of that, right? We're, we're constantly bringing, you know, talented individuals into our world that just don't have the same experience or they haven't been around as long. And it forces me to to slow down, remember a time when I felt like they feel. Mm. You know, I mean, there's a lot of empathy in in this idea of keeping your ego in check. Like, I'd forgotten what it felt like to step into the real estate industry day one, 21 years ago. Like those people help keep me connected to that, right? That new person that's eager to learn like I was so long ago. And, um, I think and now they help. You've, you're not eager to learn anymore. No, no, I know it all now, Chad. I know it all. Until, <laughs> there you go, until right? I run across somebody like Chris Stewart who's, you know, has more skills than me and then my ego gets back in check. Yeah, but. keeps us balanced. You know, we did that episode uh, a while back. I'd have to look up what number it was, but we did the one, I'm gonna see if I can get the title right. Selfish or selfless, yeah. right? And you said, you made a great point in that conversation, Bob. You said, we can't go to either extreme, right? You can go one way, you can go the other way, but really we have to be a moderate in that case and not end up on an extreme. Ego sounds like almost the exact opposite. Ego is, we don't want to go to that extreme. The closer we can be to humble, which I guess would be the opposite of ego, the better we're going to be in this case. Yeah. So I was doing a little research on this as well. And I don't mean to steal this one from you because it's basketball related, of course. Yet we've talked about Coach John Wooden on, on past episodes. He is just, I mean, I think everybody in the world of, of basketball for sure, but maybe sports, they just, if you say coach, everyone probably just assumes you mean Wooden, yeah. um, ultimate leader. Um, he was often described as the term was actively dispassionate, which sounds very interesting as I was reading into it. So he argued that passion and emotion get in the way of a job at hand. Passion will distract us from work that needs to be done to achieve success that is therefore associated with passion. So remember purpose over passion because purpose removes ego from goals and focuses on things bigger than us. They make your life about what you must do and say instead of what you care about and wish to be. Bob, tell me your thoughts as I kind of uh, read mean, to you about Coach that's a That's tricky mm -hmm. for me because I think if you want to you 
thrive at a really high level in any endeavor, you have to be a little bit passionate about it. Like you're not going to get up each day and come in and get kicked in the teeth or whatever, right? Unless you're passionate about that thing, right? Like I would mm-hmm. assume Wooden would, he didn't think any of his, his guys out there playing basketball, like weren't passionate about basketball. I think what he's saying though, is that like, if, if the reason we do it is simply because of the passion we have for it, that our ego will eventually get in the way. Right. right? And so we have to find that thing that's kind of bigger than ourselves which would get us outside of our own ego. So that purpose. That purpose, right? right? So, like, I get that. And, you know, we think about Wooden, right? A lot, a lot of these guys that he might have played for him, their purpose was to win a championship or something. And that's probably what he was ingraining in them, right? Like, you're passionate about playing basketball, but that that's going to get you a guy that goes out and scores 40 points a game. And, and you know, they, they lose every game. Like, Jordan had the first 10 years of his career. Right. Right? It's not – then when his purpose became, I'm going to win a championship and do whatever, then he'd pass the ball a little bit more. He'd go down and rebound a little bit when maybe he wouldn't have done those things before. So, yeah, I mean, that's, it makes a lot of sense. That's hard though, because I think a lot of us are, are passionate about the things we're doing, but that leaves a lot of room for ego. If you don't have that purpose, you know, Bob, while we're talking about basketball, there, there's probably, you gave Jordan as a great example, but I'm going to give probably what I think as an outsider, not being as basketball as you are, but probably the basketball example that almost everybody will get out there because everyone will remember and recognize the names of Shaquille O'Neal and Kobe Bryant, Yeah, right? I mean, both were all-stars on the Lakers, right? Together, they won, I think it was three times. Does that sound about right? Okay. But they both let success go to their head. They both let their ego become the thing and boy, you were either Team Shaq or Team Kobe. And I think part of that was that passion they both had for feeling like they were the best player in the world. There they could be the best. They they were the best. And their their purpose, which ultimately was winning titles, got set to the side for their passion for wanting to be the best player on the team. There you and, go. I yeah. think that's what Wooden might be talking about because, right, they both complained. They both argued about each other because it was all just about pure passion, which became pure ego. And... uh well, I guess Bryant, Kobe is the one who actually won that because, as I remember it, the Lakers moved Shaq on. They did. Right? Yeah. And traded him, and they didn't win again for a long time. Well, a couple, but but they won again with Kobe, I think, when he could put his ego aside a little bit and... Probably learned from the experience yeah, yeah. and got to that point where you're right, it then became purpose of winning the championships, not passion of... Oh, I'm just the best basketball player. You know, one of the things about Kobe Bryant, and it kind of gets into our next point here, is being a student will continue to challenge your ego. Like, he really was a student of the game. It's one of the things that I love about Ben, and one of the reasons I think that, you know, he he comes across with just very little, if, if any, ego, is this idea that he is constantly seeking to learn something new, mm. right? Which which ties back to this realization for him that he doesn't know it all. right. Yep. Right. And, and when you you give up that idea that, man, I've been because he's he's done it at the highest level. Right. He's done it for a lot of years. And really, in his industry, there's not anybody doing it any better than he's doing it. So it, it he could easily be lulled into that sense of like, I got this all figured out. But he doesn't. Every day he's out there reading another book, listening to another podcast like he's a student. And, and I think that's helped keep that ego in check for him. Yeah, I think by being a student, you say it well, it's almost going back to your first point, Bob. You're keeping people who are better than you around you, even if they're not physically yeah. there in your world. I can be reading books on how to run my money by people who are running it better than me. I can read books on how to uh, be a better leader. I can watch Jordan on how to be a better basketball player if that was something that was my area or my industry to go into. So staying a student will continue to challenge you. I found this great quote. I don't know if it fits, but it kind of felt like it would fit at this point. And it was, do not live in a passionate fiction, but in an actionable reality. Right? Do not live in a passionate fiction, but an actionable reality. That sounds like what Coach Wooden was talking about through all of that for us, that if we're in a passionate fiction, it's not going to ever come real. But we could be in an actionable reality when it comes to it. Bob, pride. Mm. 
right? Pride is kind of one of those words I think that goes with ego. It it's can one be of the a, seven deadly sins. Oh, look I'm at you! Do I, do I put you on the spot to name the other six? Bible school days. Can you name the other six? No, gluttony, um, lust. Um, I don't know what. what I have what to is. think about the movie to work my way through it. Let's see. There was sloth, <laughs> right? Uh, we'll, we'll have to come up with some of the others in there, uh, and I'm sure the audience is yelling them at us right now. Bob, pride allows us to turn small successes into huge accomplishments and turn our minor failures into mon monumental ones. So it allows us, by being prideful, we can change how important something is. Yeah. Right? And it becomes a, a huge mess because due to pride— It's almost that passionate fiction. Like you're, yeah, you're, absolutely. Right? Like, I think I, I did this thing. Like, what's something I've done recently that—, that your kid learned to tie his shoes. Yeah, right. right? I mean, Ooh, that becomes deal. this. Yeah, look, huge my my kid. Well, he did it early, right? He did it before any of the other kids have done it. And yeah, I mean, pride is a it's a dangerous, <laughs> right? Yeah, because in pr with pride, as it, it says, we've already achieved success, right? Doesn't matter what's really happening. We just believe that we're a success, so we're good enough, right? I think you see, like, social media is really just blown this out right yes. this idea that we look around and we, we we share a certain version of our life based on pride right like the reality is you go look at somebody's feed right and, and all we are bombard like i i have a certain idea of how you live chad it's probably not the reality of what's actually sure. happening in your house right anybody looked at me they'd see vacations with our kids and you know they don't see my kids screaming and crying and that's the reality of some days in my house right but that even trying to like make other people think that this is your life can, can be damaging to your ego because then in real life you have to come off like that person, mm -hmm. right? You can't be the, the humble person. You can't, you can't talk about the, the struggles and the challenges. I mean, more and more day after day, pride is becoming a, it's, it's dangerous. You're right. Social media has really allowed that to blow up. And then again, let's go back and, and give our, our humble leader, Ben, a little credit. Go back and look at his last five or ten posts that aren't about just rocks, just to piss me off. <laughs> uh, ben, Ben's posts usually say, here's my problem. Or, here's what I'm doing wrong. I mean, he's doing the almost the exact opposite of the prideful, look what I did, everybody. Look at how great my kids or my life uh -huh. is. Um, he's out there posting saying, hey, here's a challenge I'm having. I'm stuck with this. He's admitting that other side. He's which humble. So many of us I don't mean, there's, do there's you know, in, in his position, a lot of people want to help. Yes. Right? There's lots of people that if you set your ego aside, you're willing to be humble and say and present like the reality, right? Not the not the passionate um, fiction. Yep. Right. But if you're w willing to present the reality, then you actually you gain from that. That's he, a great point. Great that. point. Here's a challenge to our audience. Go post something on Facebook over the next week that isn't just pride. Go tell us the truth. Go post that picture of the house looking like a mess. Go post that picture of what the house looks like after the kid's temper tantrum. Go allow us inside your world and don't just allow us this social media image of who you are. And then join us at facebook.com slash group slash win, make, give, and let us know what it was so we all go check it out. Now, Bob, I you got to you got to hear this story about this guy John Kennedy Toole. Now have you ever heard the name John Kennedy Toole? I have not. Okay. So John Kennedy Toole was an American novelist from New Orleans. I, I don't say that right, right? I guess say like Nolens, yeah. right? Okay. So he's from Nolens. He wrote a novel and it was rejected his whole life. Okay? He because of this suffered from paranoia and depression that were added on to by every rejection that he kept getting. Every rejection he kept getting. And he took his own life, sadly, at age 31, okay? But after he died, his mother continued to push the book, and his book, A Confederacy for Dunces, actually won the Pulitzer Prize for fiction. We have to detach ourselves from the outcome that comes with things. That was ego that John kept having his ego stepped upon, kept be thinking he was more important than he was, but his book was a Pulitzer Prize winning book. I mean, it was that good. Yeah. I mean, this is like the, the penultimate story of, of ego just getting in the way. Right? Yes, right? Ended up taking his own life when he was 31. Can you think of a time? I'm going to put you on the spot. Can you think of a time where ego was the ultimate obstacle 
for you. And that's really all it was. Oh, <laughs> where do I start? <laughs> um, I think there, there, yeah. Um, when we, when we had a company that got bought by a, by a large, another large company in our same industry. And when we came in, when, when they kind of absorbed us, I was one of the only people left. And the reason I, I shouldn't have stayed, I think is the reality. And look, that staying led me on a path eventually to Ben, Yep. but I shouldn't have stayed. Um, but I thought that like, I thought that this thing that we had built that had been purchased, I didn't think it could go on without me. And I think the reality is it could have gone on without me. Um, but my, my ego and my pride made me say, well, look, th this isn't going to happen without me. So I have to do this when that probably, if I had been less, less prideful and I'd step back, I would have said, you know what, this is a really great time for me to do something else in my career. And Again, it, it ultimately led me back to Ben, and maybe I would have been led there had I made a different decision at that time. But yeah, I mean, I, I, I invested three years of my life after that into something that I really couldn't move the needle anymore, but in my head, I could, yep. you know? But, and and I, I think going back to that time, I realized now that this, that I made the wrong decision based on my ego. Hmm. Yeah, I did the same thing in relationships. I know there've been relationships I was sure I could fix, I could solve, I was that important, I could make it all work. Um, and thankfully in hindsight, maybe they didn't work. Maybe somebody, uh, I had friends who basically pulled me aside, get, had an intervention with me, yeah. right? Basically said, look, you can't fix this, you can't do that, and you're not seeing X, Y, and Z because of it, which opened my eyes to a whole bunch of things. When you go there, I <laughs> I think every relationship I ever had before I met my wife was dominated by my ego. Mm. And it wasn't until, you know, and, and I was the typical, you know, it's not me, it's them guy. Of course. Right? Uh, <laughs> she's, a, she's one of these and she's one of those and, uh, you know, th th her, this, that. It, it was never me, but the reality was it was actually me. Yep. You know, and it wasn't until, I don't look, I, I think in my case, Chad, and I think you, you the same way, like I found somebody better than me, yep. right. That like taught me how to, to, to have a real relationship, which forced me to put my ego aside and go, Oh my God, it has been me the whole time. Like yeah. if I want to, if I wanted to work with this person, I'm going to have to do some work on me. Right. I don't know it all. I'm not actually that good in a relationship. Um, so yeah, thanks for bringing that. Thanks for rattling my brain on that one. Hey, no worries. You know, the, Aaron, your wife was hoping that we would have this conversation <laughs> anyway, you said at the beginning. So you're going to go home and give her a big thanks. Yet at the same time, Bob, I'm going to bet there are some things you are better than her at. So if we went back to the opening part of this conversation where we're saying, surround yourself with someone who's better than you, surround yourself with someone who's maybe not as skilled as you, and surround yourself with people who are equal to you to push you, you and your wife, just like myself and Nita, she's probably that person ab above in some things. You're the person above in some things. And boy, doesn't that help bring humility knowing that it's sometimes me, but it's not yeah. always me. Yeah, totally. Okay. So let's keep going, Bob. Tell me a little bit more. When, when do we learn? You just brought it up in the, in the conversation, right? It, it's not me, yeah, it's them. It's not bottom. me, it's them. Rock bottom. Like, I mean, that, I don't wouldn't say that I was necessarily at rock bottom when I met my wife, but yeah. I had gone through a, you know, a number of relationships that had ended poorly. In hindsight, it my fault, right? Yes. And so I was, in many ways, like relationally, I was at rock bottom. And yep. so you, you, you learn to make changes or you get motivated, right? You, you have the potential to emerge as somebody new, like in these low points of our life. Oh, yeah. I remember uh, my bankruptcy that came along with it, my financial disaster. And I remember something Ben said to me, boy, here we go again talking about him, right? It was Ben who said this to me when I moved to Bellingham now 10, 11 years ago to first come up here and work with him the first time. He said to me, nobody here knows you. So what's your story gonna be? Mm. And it was, I had hit rock bottom and he said, okay, but there are highlights in there still. Find one. And let's make that your story and build the person around that, right? So folks, you, you, at some point in your life, you're going to hit rock bottom. Now, that doesn't mean your whole life falls apart. It might be rock bottom financially. It might be rock bottom relationally. Maybe you're doing well money, but you're messing things up with the family or whatever that's going to be. But we all get to a rock bottom at some point, and it's sometimes the only way we'll learn. Well, it's, that's when you realize, like, man, 
I got to put this ego aside. Like this ego has been telling me to do things or operate in a certain way and it's not working. Yeah, right. absolutely. So let's give you some tips on how to also continue to keep that ego in check. And Bob, one best way to do it. And again, Ben's modeled this to us again and again, focus on other people. Yeah. He does such a great part of that, that give of win, make, give, right? He's focusing on other people. One of the ways, and I appreciate you not doing it as I was getting into it, is don't interrupt people. Yeah, I was going to jump right in there and just take over, but. And, and we all do it at some point, yet that's our ego saying, no, 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 it's my turn to talk. I've got something more important to say than what you've got to say. Yeah. Right? So step one, don't interrupt other people. Focus on um, really understanding them, mm. right? Like, like ask, ben, and again, we keep using him as an example here, but we'll do that because That's because he's not listening. Right, yeah, he didn't listen to <laughs> um, He does a good job of really digging in on, like when, when you say something, he'll ask follow-up questions all the time. And we, we've done an episode, I think, on, on oh, some yeah. of these concepts of just like the follow-up question and, and, and really digging in and, and letting them know that you're, you're listening, you're, you're, you're trying to get a better understanding of what they're saying, um, he, you know, he even does the, 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 the notepad and the, and the yep. Sharpie takes notes while he's listening to you. Right. So, so that you, you know, like, man, he's really focused on what I'm saying and, and he's asking follow-up questions and, um, and in that time he doesn't have ego, right. He's not waiting for, you know, to say the next thing that, that he thinks is going to be the answer. He's just, he's just trying to understand. Yeah. You hit on from. some great things there from making sure people are understanding, asking questions to understand listen, right? It was don't interrupt, I said, and listen to them. Don't think about what you're going to say and understand the things that are really motivating the other people. Uh, the last one I would add to that list, Bob, as you've just covered was, and hold judgment. Yeah. Right? yeah reserve, reserve or hold your judgment. Absolutely. Make sure you find out the whole story before you jump into conclusions. That's going to be your ego speaking. So, Bob, we want people to remember that they should focus on themselves and their internal drive, right? Put all the work into being the best that you can be. Don't worry about expectations that other have out there for you. Because yeah. a person focused on internal doesn't need the spotlight as much as those people who let the spotlight be the thing that's motivating them because they need to be in it. Yeah, I, I had a, I'll, I'll just share this. I, I had a time in my life. So when we had active rain, you're obviously yep. familiar with that chat, but we had this big social network in the real estate industry and just, you know, thousands of people used it and hundreds of thousands of millions of people came to, to read content on that site every, um, and during that time, my entire life was, was out there. Like every, my, my marriage, my, my failed marriage, by the way, my, yep. my, my kid, I I put everything, um, out there on the line and there was on the line. Yeah. Yeah. Th but there was like that spotlight gets addicting. Oh yes. You know, it's, it's, it, it's really easy to be like, Oh, I just put a post out there and 350 people commented on it. Like, look at me. Right. Um, when that, and then I had a, my, my marriage fell apart mm -hmm. and it was, it was like, I basically just left social media. I was like, I'm out of here. I don't want to be here anymore. Like, the, all this stuff I've been putting out there, it crumbled. And now like, look at me, I was so worried about what the spotlight was shining on me and, and what that looked like that I just, it was probably a year that I just left social media, left everywhere. Like, you know, I went from 5,000 Facebook friends down to like 800. Like I got rid of everything. And um, but it was, it was because of this, like I was focused on this wrong thing. I, I didn't have a good sense of, of like why I was really doing this. Mm. The spotlight is the ego speaking. Yeah. Right. And, and being that person who doesn't crave the spotlight. And again, let's talk about him because we've talked about him enough on this episode. Right. I don't know how many times I've seen Ben win an award and not be there to receive it. <laughs> right. It actually annoyed people who were expecting him to be there. And Ben would send other people from his organization to say, you deserve it. Yeah, Go he's get tried it. to give me a couple of his trophies over the, over the years, and I'm like, what would I, what do I want this for? He's like, I don't want it. Like, all right, put this stuff. He does have a little. There's a little trophy area here, but it's nowhere near his office. I'll tell you that. No, of course, and it's don't search for the spotlight. How can you put other people in it? We'd mentioned earlier your social media. How much of is it? How much of your postings is it that you're putting out there to say spotlight? Look at me. 
Look at me. Everyone liked my post. Everybody liked this. Everybody loved this. And I'll do it sometimes. I'll be running and I, I, I'll have a fast run one day and I'll go and post it. And you can be sure the first thing Nita says to me is, had to let everybody know how fast you went. How important <laughs> was that that important? It's like, damn it. Right. I got to go take that post down. You're right. You're reminding me. I made that all about ego, whatever it is. Now I've just switched to using Facebook stories because they go away after like 24 hours. <laughs> and ego's I only on display. It's only on display temporarily in that yeah. case. Right. Okay. So Bob, the most success is not our own success, right? No one succeeds alone. And if we can understand that, I think we can keep our ego in check. There's a quote to wrap this one up. In the war of ego, the loser always wins. That's one of those like double negative. Like I got to like, I got to write that out on a whiteboard to see <laughs> if that is actually true or not. In the war of ego, the loser always wins. Meaning the person that can set it aside, doesn't have it, it doesn't Lose swell Lose that up, battle, it, yes. Uh, you will end up winning in the long run. Put your ego aside. Hopefully Bob and I sharing some of our stories here, sharing some of that information that's out there has been helpful for you to keep your ego in check and allow you to win by not giving in to Here's your Here's what ego. we want you to do. We want you to share this with a friend because we want this to be the most listened to episode ever so that Ben Kinney's ego gets hurt, right? <laughs> oh, Bob, nice. We're trying to prove that this guy even has one. So <laughs> you guys can help us out. We'd appreciate it. Share this with a friend because you don't want to be the one to tell them they need to get their ego in check. <laughs> Let Bob and I be the ones to lead them on the way and invite them to facebook.com slash groups slash win make give where you can tell them it was our fault that they just had to listen to the episode you shared folks join us in that facebook group please remember give us a rating if you haven't reviewed the podcast we love them we read them we look forward to yours and as bob mentioned share this so we can make this the most listened to episode and really give ben a nice kick in the ego until our next episode as always do good. <laughs>